Well, if Jesus Christ is actually who he said he is, then that would mean that would mean he. Everybody needs him for uh, eternal life if you hope to go to heaven one day. I mean, we're all playing VR chat, but so why? the chance of us going to heaven... Because like, we're sinners. We've sinned against the holy God, so we need we need to be made right with them. Because Jesus me, Christ came to my... for us to be made right me. in his presence. But without him, God's going to have to judge us my... and everything that we've done. So no matter what that is, all, all the Ten Commandments that we broke, every me, single sin that we've done, so me, without right? Jesus Christ, God's just going to have to judge yeah, us because he is a righteous God. But through my Jesus Christ, son, he imputes all of our right? sin onto him. He died in our place and paid the punishment in our place. So us just simply believing in him, God puts his righteousness onto us. So then we have a relationship with God, get to go to heaven, all that wonderful stuff because of simply just what Jesus did. And that was done out of love. That's how much God loved us. We couldn't do it ourselves. I'm not a perfect person. You're not a perfect person. So we need somebody to save us in this condition that we're in, of sin. And he did. Right. And I believe that whether or not he existed, I would have been the same. Started becoming suicide and relied on them heavily. And Why not? VR for attention. Right. So the thing is, is that not that drama dumper. Uh, I'm doing just fine, in my opinion. And all I had was VR chat. Of course. I mean, everybody's doing just fine right now. But when you die, that's the that's the next question. If you're gonna have to stand face to face with the Holy God, you deserve judgment. God's gonna have to judge you. I knew Without Jesus Christ, because you're you're going to hell, my my man. Going into my, to it's scary to me. But it doesn't really make a difference to me, heaven or hell. Too, but no longer. Well, if you if you are okay I with eternal torment and separation from God, that is your choice, and you get to make that. God will not force you. He won't drag you into the kingdom. But salvation is a free gift. You can be in heaven and enjoy God's presence for the rest of eternity, and you can have a relationship with Him right now on earth, and have a better life here on earth knowing that's him and knowing that fact by by believing in him now so that's you can choose and that condition so, but that's up to you and I was alone, but god made it so god made it as easy as possible for you because he loved you so much i finally just put my trust in god and i said you know what god i'm i'm gonna i'm just but gonna do we really get to you choose to want what we want like that, and just tell me you know tell me what to do oh, you mean like free will yeah so the thing is that i would say so yeah god's given us the ability to choose Yes or no, right from wrong. I needed that person. Anyways, yeah. so the thing is, is that uh, when it came to my senses, I feel like that's a whole lot of work. My life back up. I started uh, a lot of work. Back to college. I started joining ministry, intern program for the church I'm attending to, trying to become a pastor myself, right, and just do good works, right. And I sat and thought about, it. I was like, what's, you know what's what? a lot of work, Dylan? I know there are people on VR that are out there like me that live that kind of life in darkness. Oh, why would I need to change suicide, anything? Right? You know, looking whether or not I believe in Jesus, it doesn't uh, do anything for, for me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't think it's for me. And a oh, now. Right now, what I would make it for you? I want minister out there to the floor and not that, but I want to come out here because this is the next like thing of like, uh, of yeah, I don't know. Of distraction. You, you would probably agree with me that this life is not what it should be, like be in, their in terms of their sins in, the and crimes that are committed, the people who are hurt, death, all that stuff. It shouldn't be the way it is. But Jesus Christ claims that he's going to make all things new the way they're supposed to be, the way they were, they were supposed to be from the very beginning before we rebelled against God and decide to do our own thing so and make our own choice and go against his will, which is why sin is in, in this world and why we needed a savior in the first place. So God's promising a new future that is going to be made perfect. And all those who do want to live for righteousness and to live with him, he gives them the opportunity. That's why Jesus died in our place. So he just simply says, hey, believe in my son. If you want that, if you want a relationship with me, if you want to be in heaven forever, and if you want that relationship with me, here it is. There's no works or performance or prayers I have to pray, whatever else, like religion often teaches, because that's not in the Bible. It's just simply believing upon Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't know. No matter how much I read, you know, it doesn't really do anything for me. I'm just a villain, bro. Hey, we all are. I'm, dude, I'm a villain too. But that's why I needed Jesus. That's why I recognized my need for a savior. I needed somebody to save me from my wickedness and my evil. You know what I mean? Would you Would you confess your sins? How much time do you got? I got a lot. <laughs> I'm just asking like whether or not you would. Well, what do you mean confess? 
like to you, to to God, to a priest? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, like in general, I wouldn't really confess, but I would brag about it. Would or you wouldn't? Are you a, a real pastor? Uh, we we host yeah. services here yeah. in uh, in uh, in VR chat. So I, I, yeah, I'm currently I'm going through Bible college. I'm going through that process. We do have a little ministry here in VR chat. Yeah, I'm the leader of. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yep. yeah, you know, actually, I read a lot more like Buddhism and Hinduism and stuff like that, like okay. outside the biblical canon. Okay, what what I attracts that's, you that's a little, about for me? Okay. What attracts you about Hinduism and, and Buddhism? Uh, the history, history, and uh, the language. So does that solidify that it's real? No, if there's anything that I really get down with, it's Taoism. Are you familiar? Uh, I might, I might be if you if you refresh. Uh, kind of what it what it's about. Letting go, like you know, letting go of everything. The idea of good and evil, of sin, of everything, material desire. Because we don't need any of that. You know, you're much more free when you don't have to worry about doing right or wrong. That is true. Because you're just living by your fleshly nature and desire. But that's how evil's produced. Because that's how the way the world is being God, lived no. now. You know what I mean? Letting go of your fleshly oh. desires, being a man of uh, virtue, if you will, the only virtue. I mean, but that's well, why does uh, why is virtue uh, virtue valuable in your mind? It's like a torch that guides your life. So, so you attend okay. Jewish temple, but have you ever been to believe the life is valuable? The, 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 the Bible? It's about as valuable as anything. So if let's just say that there is no God, who imputes that value on us? Because if we're all just here by chance and we're all just going to die one day and there's no soul and there's no value to us because uh, we're all just cosmic accidents at the end of the day. How can there be value in us if it doesn't come from somebody who has given it to us like a god? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there is no value. It's completely absurd. Therefore, you said there is, though. worry about it? You said there's value in life and there's value there in virtue. Amazing. Well, I said it was about as valuable as anything. Yeah. So it's not valuable because you said nothing's valuable. So like, the scrolls of the Tanakh well, if its value is equal to that of a rock, uh, then a rock is either as valuable as a human being, or a human being is as low as a rock. Yeah. So that, that's where I would that's where I would disagree because I would say like we're we're super valuable, especially in the eyes of God. So life is so valuable, and virtue and morals and all that stuff that's that's very valuable because that helps us live a the most or the best life we can now. Loving one another, sacrifice, denying ourselves. That's what the Bible teaches. We're called to deny our flesh, den deny our uh, desires here on earth to live for a higher calling, a calling of living a life of love and self-sacrifice. So that that's what gives me a lot of motivation to be out here and doing this stuff. Just telling people about that because that's what I'm living for. I'm, I'm living for not my flesh because I know that's temporary. That's all going to fade. I want to live for something that's eternal, that's that's truly righteous, Uh and all and all those values is something I hold dear. And I don't value that as a value of a rock. A rock doesn't provide much, but love does. So I live for love. And I'm kind of just advocating for you, dude, that Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he is love. God is love. So I, I think uh, it's important for us to, to consider who we're serving in this life. If it's ourself, then and just and nothing really matters and everything's valueless or as valuable as a, as a rock, then I, I would say that that's, that's not a good way to direct your life. Or maybe you're looking at it the wrong way and that a rock is just as valuable as a human being. I think that's an even better way to live than valuing humanity over rocks. There we go. You know, I would say what, that would well, be very foolish. Then? I would say it's very foolish to compare human life to a rock. A rock, a rock doesn't serve anywhere near the same purpose or function as a human being with a conscience and a soul. So I would say I would have to disagree and say that that is that is very foolish to say that. In 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 respect. But isn't Jesus the rock? Jesus is the foundation. Is the immovable rock of of building your life upon where it can't be shaken that's how strong it is that's what he's compared to but he's not a literal Sorry, rock someone's <laughs> uh pastor mike could you help me on this part okay so can you repeat what you said that's a cool the entire <laughs> thing that makes me not really the entire thing that makes me not really see like religion as a main motivator is the fact that years ago hundreds of years ago religion had different rules the same book had different rules and then as society developed certain rules were changed and in um certain so a good example of that is um if i were to think about it uh if i remember the the classic man shall not lay down with boy has an entire debate amongst archaeologists about what's the original translation man shall not lay down with boy as in pedophilia or man shall not lay down with man as in and it's this entire thing because if you think about it, religion's rules are subjective throughout history. So what's the so kind of 
what's the point let it be a guy if the next day the church may just change and say something completely absurd yeah yeah so so absolutely that's a great point because religion and the church they they're not the, they're not our authority it doesn't matter what the catholic church says or whoever hold, holds a position or says they're in a position of authority it does change over time that's why uh what century was it was it the 16th century with martin luther who who came in uh and, and posted his 99 thesis to the catholic church because he realized that they were they were not uh, actually interpreting the bible in the way that it, it was actually taught so a lot of people they didn't have bibles back in the day so they would often say like, hey, you need to pay for you to uh, be forgiven. But that's not in the Bible. So they would yeah, constantly be corrupt. Go to heaven. Yeah. So basically, Martin Luther, he was a, he was a good guy for the Reformation because he was like, dude, this is what the Bible says. And your church is corrupt. You're, you're saying things that are not in the Bible. And even nowadays, like when it comes to that topic like you just mentioned, that stuff is always being brought up. Uh, and it, there's always new interpretations because usually either there's an agenda involved or people are, are trying to fit something else in there. It's not like there's uh, an authority. Like God's not the one. God's not the one changing it. It's man. Oh wait, let's look back at this. Maybe it's not actually this. Maybe it's actually that. That's man doing it. There's no. There's no other authority. Like God's going there and changing the picture. The Bible has been the same from all generations, and people will always try to misinterpret something, which is why we have to actually be very uh, careful as we scrutinize Scripture because. It's, it is unchanging. We can't be adding stuff to it. So no matter what a church says or a religion does over time, the Bible remains the same. Man is corrupt. So man will try to change stuff all the time to fit our narrative and what we want. So we just have to always just go back to what was said, the earliest manuscripts from around Jesus' time. We have copies of those. Let's compare it. Let's actually look at the Greek and the Hebrew. and Let's figure this stuff out instead of just believing what somebody's interpretation is about a certain verse or passage. Oh, I, I'm, I, I'm nodding, but like, you don't see me nodding. I'm so used to playing.